In this video, you're going to build an ESP8266 Wi-Fi button that can trigger any home automation event. This is like a remote control that you can take in your pocket or place it anywhere that when pressed, it sends out an email. This is not a new idea and this concept was popularized by Amazon that created the Dash button, which is a small button that instantly orders a product to your home. Since the ESP boards are so inexpensive, we can make a similar project that works like the dash button, but with our own twist. Instead of ordering a product, we can turn on a light, toggle a lamp, send a value, trigger an email notification, and much more, as you're going to see by the end of this video. For this project, we're going to use a free service called IFTTT, that stands for if these than that. This service is used to automate a wide variety of tasks online. In this case, we want that when the ESP button is pressed, it sends an email. Type in your browser ifttt.com and click the Get Started button in the middle of the page. Complete the form with your own details and create your account. I already have an account, so I'll simply sign in. Open the Applets tab. Press the Create New Applet button. Click the This Word and search for the Webhooks service. You need to type in the event name button underscore pressed. With the Webhooks service, you can trigger an action when you make an HTTP request to a specific URL. Click the Create Trigger button. Now press the That Word. Search for the Gmail service. If it's the first time using the Gmail service with IFTTT, a new window opens and you'll have to grant access. So, IFTTT can send out emails through your account. Choose the Send Email option. Enter the email address where you want to receive your notifications. You can customize the subject and body of the email, but for demonstration purposes, I'll leave the default values. Finally, press the Create Action button. You should have your applet created after clicking Finish. Now open the Search tab and find the Webhooks service. Open it and go to the Documentation tab. Here you can find your unique API key that you must keep private. Type in the Event Name button underscore pressed. Your final URL should appear in the bottom of the web page. Copy that URL. Open a new tab in your browser and hit enter. You should see a message saying congratulations. Open your email client and a new message should be there. In case the email didn't arrive after a few seconds, I recommend double checking the URL and see if you're using the correct event name, both in your applet and in your URL. If it works, save your unique URL in a notepad, because you'll need it later in this project. Here's the code that you need to upload to your ESP board. You need to change three things. The SSID and password. You'll also have to put your unique IFTTT URL resource. The rest of the code is pretty simple. It starts the serial communication at a baud rate of 11 runs the init Wi-Fi function that establishes the Wi-Fi connection between your ESP and your router. Then it runs the make IFTTT request function that will make a request to the IFTTT service and ultimately IFTTT will send out an email. Finally, we're using the deep sleep function so that the ESP is always off and consumes very little power. The deep sleep function with the ESP was covered in greater detail in a previous guide that you can find below this video. In summary, when you press a push button, the ESP wakes up, performs an action and it goes back to deep sleep mode to save the battery power. It's pretty simple how it works. After adding your SSID, password and URL, upload the code to the ESP. 
I also have a link below this video where you can learn how to upload code to an ESP01 using the FTDI programmer. For this project we want it to be portable and easy to make, so we're going to power the ESP with a lithium battery. To power the ESP safely with a battery, you need to make a voltage regulator circuit and we've also covered that subject in a previous guide. There's a link below this video in case you've missed it. After having the code running on the ESP01, these are the components that you need for your circuit. Here's the schematics that you need to follow. I recommend assembling the circuit first on a breadboard to test if it's working properly. Then you can make a permanent circuit with a small strip board and a few wires. In fact, that's what I did. Finally, I used the plastic box enclosure to start this project. After assembling everything, here's how the final product looks like. It kinda looks like a remote control. Now you can take it or place it anywhere. Let's test it. When I press the push button, I receive an email within a few seconds, as you can see. Since the ESP is always in deep sleep mode, even though it's powered with a battery, it can last weeks or even months. I think it's important that you keep in mind that the application for this project are endless. For example, the event button pressed, depending on where you place your ESP, can have a different meaning. If you place it as a doorbell button, you can use it to know if someone is at your home. Also note that instead of using a third-party service like IFTTT, you could turn on a relay that is connected to another ESP, send a request to another device in your network, make an HTTP request to the node red to trigger an action, publish an MQTT message, or connect to any other home automation software. You can also replace the push button with other sensors or actuators. For instance, if you replace the push button with a PR motion sensor, you can be notified when someone enters a room in your house. Or you can use it to detect smoke in a room. Replacing the push button with a magnetic read switch allows you to detect if someone opened the door or window. You can even attach it to a mailbox to see when you receive actual letters in the mail or other packages. That's it for now. I hope this project was interesting and you can apply these concepts to your own home automation projects. Thanks for watching.